Hey everyone, I thought I'd show you a woodworking project today. So check out this uh, wooden vase that I made on the lathe. I've made a few of these things in the past before, and so take a look at them. These, these all have something in common. They're all built by laminating wooden boards together and then turning them on the lathe. So uh, in this case I made a dish here. Um, and similarly, even though the pieces don't line up, it was made by layers of laminations uh, set at different angles. This last project was made by uh, putting together radial pieces, so it's a little bit of a different process, uh, but all the rest of these projects were all uh, laminated sections. For all of these projects, it's important to have very flat surfaces on the boards, since they'll be glued together and then turned on the lathe. Uh, it's really critical that there be no gaps between the boards. So I used a tool called a jointer to accomplish this, uh, but unfortunately my jointer has had very, very dull blades for a long time, so it was time to sharpen them. I had bought a sharpening attachment for a grizzly sharpening tool, and so as you can see the old blades are really pretty bad. There's a couple of heavy nicks in them, and there, there's just no edge left at all. You can see that it's a uh, dual bevel blade, so there's one angle heading into the edge, and then there's another angle that takes it down to the edge. But I didn't really care to do that, so I just set the sharpener for one angle and then slid the blade across the wheel a number of times. The result is really nice. It's a very sharp blade, and we are ready to cut. I started by jointering one edge and then jointering the adjacent face. This produces an awful lot of wood uh, shavings and, and chips, as you can see here. The purpose of the jointer is really just to make a flat face. So after getting one face flat, you need another tool called a planer, which will make the opposite face parallel and flat to the first one. So these two tools form uh, an important setup, an important pair of tools to get wood straight and flat with sides that are uh, faces that are parallel. I chopped the boards into square sections and then stacked them up in roughly the shape I was looking for and really just very roughly sketched out what I was going to do. I knew that this project was going to have a more narrow neck and sort of a bulbous base, and so I didn't cut the top boards all the way across because I, I knew I was just going to remove that material anyway on the lathe. The glue up is pretty standard. I just used plain old uh, yellow wood glue and made sure there was plenty of it there. You really don't want to have a dry wood uh, glue joint in this case because it might leave a, a gap, and the gap you know, it could be bad because it would weaken the piece, but worse than that, it might just be seen. Since we're going to cut into this and the gaps are going to be shown all around the edge of the, of the piece, uh, it's important that the glue swell up in there and uh, close up those gaps. I used the bandsaw just to cut off the corners of the piece, since those are going to be chopped off on the lathe anyway. And uh, taking all of that corner material down on the lathe is, is dangerous and time-consuming. So it's easier just to start with a piece that more approximates a circle cross-section anyway. I used a couple of scrap blocks to offset the piece from my faceplate on the lathe and used just a few screws to hold it down. Um, in some cases you would turn a foot on the, peak, on the finished piece so that the screw holes would be cut away or in my case what I tend to do is just use um, some felt or, or some other foot material to cover up the screw holes on the bottom. This setup vibrated quite a bit when I mounted it on the lathe since it was fairly off-center, so it took a while uh, with a roughing gouge to get the piece down to, to something that was easy to cut. Also, using a wood lathe is something that definitely requires lots of safety gear. Uh, if something breaks free on there, you really want a lot of gear between you and the, and the piece that's flying towards you. It also involves many hours of listening to the thing, so Cumulatively, damage to hearing can occur over long periods of time, even with sounds that aren't very loud. So I definitely recommend using uh, ear, eye, and respiratory protection. Some of the wood dust is actually very toxic. Besides being annoying to breathe the dust, um, getting a lot of it in your lungs is bad because the, the woods themselves, some of these exotic hardwoods, are actually toxic. I continued using the roughing gouge to uh, get the piece down to size, and I didn't really carefully control the curves from a drawing or anything. It, it's done kind of on the fly. In fact, I don't have any tool other than a roughing gouge. So I'll use the roughing gouge to get all the way down to uh, the finished surface, and then sometimes I'll use a chisel, and then eventually just switch to sandpaper to get it down to, to, the, final, to the final surface. 
Notice that the vase is solid, so to actually be able to put something inside of it, we need to drill a hole out so that um, you can put flower stems or whatever in there. So for that, I just used a one inch diameter drill bit and just drilled it right on the drill press. I'll make a copper or plastic tube insert with a cap on the bottom so that the user can put fresh flowers in there with water if they want. The wood itself would not be able to hold water even with um, polyurethane finishing or something inside. I finished the piece with just a wipe on polyurethane, which is probably my favorite wood finish. Uh, it goes on really easy, it's durable, doesn't change the color of the wood that much. And you can also adjust the uh, level of gloss by putting on more coats. And so one coat will leave a pretty matte finish um, with a little bit of uh, four aught steel wool in between coats. You can actually get a fairly high gl a gloss if that's what you want. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.